Hi, this is Sholey Physics, episode on internal resistance, I'm mainly looking on the uh, internal resistance of a battery or uh, something like a D cell or C cell. Um, so what I have set up here is a circuit with a, with a load resistor. And these two symbols down here are representing the battery. The battery is a combination of an EMF, an electromotive force, and an internal resistance. So this resistor down here is our internal resistance. Uh, this is the load resistance up here. I've got 10 ohms set for that load. Uh, I also have a current meter or an ammeter and a voltage meter down here. And this volt voltmeter is set up to, uh, to measure the potential difference between the two sides of the battery. So right now, um, I've got 9 volts up there right now. And if I look at this load resistor, it's 0 volts because I have the switch open, circuits open. So there is a potential difference on either side of the battery, but uh, not across the load. Now, um, what we'll find is by closing that switch, the potential difference across the battery changes. So um, that's due to this, this load. There's a potential difference across the battery of the EMF part of the battery of 9 volts. So that 9 volts stays the same no matter what, no matter what the current is. But the battery itself has some internal forces, we call it the internal resistance, just to sum it up, everything that's going on in there. As the current changes, the uh, potential difference will change also. Now if I do change the resistance load, increase the resistance, what's that going to do to the current? Well, it's going to resist the flow of charge more so that's going to decrease the current. And you'll see that uh, the potential, as we increase the resistance and the current decreases, you see that current meter decreasing its value here, the voltage, the potential difference across the battery is increasing. So that might be a, a little weird to think about at first, but uh, with a lower flow, we get a higher potential. Now, if I increase that resistance, that, that voltage, or the potential difference across the battery, increases towards that 9 volt maximum that it's got that it's set at. If I decrease the resistance to load, that voltage, especially when we get up down to those really low resistance values, which means a very high current, the potential difference across the battery really decreases quite a bit. So this is the phenomenon we're looking at here. I'm going to return that to 10 ohms. Um, and now if I switch that battery or the, the switch back off so we uh, have an open circuit the battery returns to 9 volts so this is the phenomenon called internal resistance there's a, a, all batteries have it and it is affected by the current flow through the battery all right so let's switch you over here all right so in, this is our topic internal resistance and I'm going to try to reproduce what we had there on simulation. There's an, a load resistance, I'll call it capital R, in the circuit. There's an internal resistance, I'll call this lowercase r, and the EMF, represented by an epsilon. Okay, this is the electromotive force may be a new term for you but think of it this way without the battery to motivate the, the charges to move nothing would happen in this circuit so a battery and I'll just kind of draw in a, a picture of a like a D cell in there right we usually call them batteries or a D cell is connect is technically called a cell and if we put several cells together uh, that that way we get a battery so a, a six volt lantern battery can be created with four D cells. And that's usually, the, the cheaper ones usually have just four D cells put in there, packaged together. The, the better ones that last a little bit longer have uh, these extended, longer looking D cells packed in there, but there are four of them. A nine volt battery is also technically correct. It's called a battery because there are six one and a half volt cells, usually little tiny sandwiches stacked on each other. Uh, that's an off topic. They all have internal resistance, however. So if uh, we look at a, a potential difference as we go around this, this circuit here, and this is a, in a couple of lessons when we look at Kirchhoff's rules, this is the, uh, the, the idea. It's, this is called the loop rule, what I'm about to do here. 
but uh, think of it this way. If this were a roller coaster, um, starting at this point, there would be a dip, like a, uh, a downward sloping hill. And as I've related it before, the, the EMF would be like the motorized chain that pulls that um, roller coaster up the hill to a higher potential. So with a downhill from the an energy from the resistor, there's going to be an uphill from the EMF source. Then the electrons will travel through this resistor. Another downhill will have a negative change in potential, and we'll get back down to the back to that starting point again. So the potential difference we should find as we go around the loop is zero. There might be some negatives and some positives. Another negative here, but we should get get back to the same potential we started at. So if we just run that around, there's going to be first with a flow of current going this way. That's the direction I'm taking my loop in is in the direction of this current. There's going to be a negative change in potential from the resistor with the amount IR. You might recall that uh, resistance is the ratio V over I. So VAB would be, AB would be the between um, A and B, between one point and the resistor and the other. So uh, that would give us the VAB for the resistor equal to IR. Now this resistor I'm using is a little r, representing the internal resistance of the battery. So we're going to have a change of potential of negative IR. Now as we cross the battery, that's going to give a positive potential change. So we're going to add that epsilon, the EMF. That's going to be our positive value. And as we go around and cross this load, we're going to have another negative change of potential of capital I, capital R. And that gets us back down, back to that starting point again. So if we sum all these up, the change of potential between this point and getting around to it again should be zero. Uh, should take a total of zero work. It's like there's, a, there's some negative work done, positive work, and negative work, and we get back down to zero. It's like turning around in a circle. Um, if you're on a merry-go-round and you go around one complete loop in that circle on the merry-go-round, a uh, total of zero work has been done. So that total potential in that loop is equal to zero. Now if we rearrange this, I get a negative, I've got an epsilon, sorry, minus IR, so that's our uh, VAB potential difference across the battery. Now technically I haven't specified what point A and point B is, so I'm just using this as a general term, VAB. And then we'd have the minus IR, so there's the potential from the load, equals zero. Now if we rewrite this, what we have here is, I'm going to add the I, the I times the load resistance to the other side, and you can also re rewrite this E minus I little r equals I big R. So we have the VAB across the battery equals the IR of the load in the circuit. Okay. So what will happen now if the current in the circuit changes? If the current increases? Now let's say how would the current increase? That would be by decreasing the load of the circuit. Let's get a visual. Okay, first let's switch this on. And now if I go to the current here, sorry, the, the resistor, if I decrease the resistance, notice how the VAB across that battery is decreasing as well. If I decrease the resistance, that increases the current I. Right. So, get back to the, my sketch here. If the current I decreases, if I decreases, um, oh, I'm sorry, if R decreases, that would increase the, the I, the current. And if I increases, then this term epsilon minus IR, what's going to happen to that? If I increases, then this whole term is going to decrease. Okay, 
So if I increases, that whole term decreases. That's where we're getting the, the VAB giving us a decrease. All right. So uh, two things to work with here. It's a VAB across the battery. is epsilon minus IR. And we put that all together in the circuit. Uh, that's where we're going to use this tool here. So as, as an example, um, let's say there's a 12 volt battery in a car, car batteries. Okay. And uh, that 12 volts means the EMF is 12V. All right. Now, if there's a, a 5 ohm internal resistance in that battery then when you first start the car there's a big draw on current so what's going to happen to that EMF value across the battery is it going to increase going to decrease it should dip quite a bit when there's a big draw there's a current a large current flow through a coil of wire so there's not much resistance in that so it's a big current and uh, that will decrease the VAB so VAB is minus IR okay then when there's zero current then the VAB is going to be 12 volts so if you measure that the potential difference across the car battery when it's not running you're going to get a 12 volt reading but if you measure that potential difference when you're starting the car or running uh, running something off it as a load then there's a current flowing um, so what will be the if let's say at one point we read a VAB of um, 10 volts, okay, then what is the current flowing through the battery at that point? What's the current due to that load? So what we can do is take the 10 volts is the VAB. It's EMF at, without anything connected with no load is 12 volts minus I times the internal resistance of five. So we can find that uh, 10 minus 12 is negative 2 equals negative 5i. So there would be a, a current equal to 2 divided by 5 or 0.4 amperes. Okay. And you may also, uh, what's a little bit easier to, to determine in this kind of cases, which you might, or another situation you might have, is if a, a current is measured and a potential difference is measured, we can then determine the internal resistance. So that's another avenue you might see. So that's the end of this episode. Hope it was helpful.